All right, this morning we're going to cover what is sharding in MongoDB. And we're going to have a, a few part series as to what this is and, and how to apply it and keep each video uh, in the series pretty short. So the first thing to note is that sometimes in our environment we get into a period of data growth. And when we talk about sharding in MongoDB, we are referring to um, basically the equivalent or similar, let me not say equivalent, let's say similar to partitioning in uh, SQL Server, the difference is in MongoDB, it's occurring on a, at a per collection basis. That's we're basically approaching sharding um, per collection. Okay. Now, the key in sharding, just like in partitioning, is does it actually apply to our environment? And the reason why I say that's a key is because just like in partitioning, a lot of people will throw, not a lot of people, but some developers will throw it as a solution. It, it sounds really cool. It does. Don't get me wrong. Um, it, it sounds like the hip cool solution. And in fact, in a lot of conferences, they cover it. The problem is more often than not, it's not the solution you need. And any time an environment approaches uh, table partitioning to solve problems, they actually end up creating problems that they didn't I think about beforehand and to, to put it in perspective it's a lot more administrative overhead and they weren't thinking about that so first you don't want to approach sharding after your data capacity has grown too much that is one one truth that you'll hear which is you want to shard before your data you know you again monitoring growth of, of data in general is very useful but you want to make sure that you you do it before you start hitting capacity um, and then the other thing too as well is you want to consider your RAM. Uh, for instance, if your capacity of RAM, if you're reaching that max capacity of RAM uh, uh, with the, the actual set of data that you're working on or that you use regularly, that might be an indication that you need to start looking to the solution of sharding. And then of course, um, let's suppose another one is that you have numerous and in numerous amounts of um, write transactions and these write transactions are overwhelming the current instance your current mongod instance and when those things occur um, then it might be better to start uh, looking into sharding as a solution to distribute it across um, multiple sets so those are some instances in which we should consider it. If our let's say let's say we're working on a data set that is, um, or let's just say that in our work we're never using more than a hundred meg of, of uh, RAM, which definitely sounds low nowadays. So we're only using a hundred meg of RAM, and we're on a machine or let's say a server, and the server is bulked out um, with let's say uh, 32, 32 gig of RAM. Well, our data set that we're working on, we're dealing with 100 meg, we just, we're not hitting capacity there. It's not, it's not a good way to, to sit there. It's not a, it would not be a wise thing to use sharding whatsoever, okay? 100 meg of data, that's our, that's our active working, that's what we're working on, that's a data set we're kind of playing around with. Why would we use sharding in that case, okay? Suppose that we were on a server with eight gig of memory, which is definitely not a server built for databases, but anyway, I, when I see a server like that, I'm like, I don't understand why they're doing database technology there. But let's suppose that we are, and our active working set, the, the type of data that we're working on, we're looking at maybe, uh, we're approaching seven gig of data. So when we start Mongo, we, we have a huge, or Mongo, I'm sorry, we have a huge problem because we're, we're hitting that capacity. That's a good example of whether, you know, you either are going to need to throw more memory at this problem, or again, we can look at distributing sharding. I'll look at sharding as a solution, I'm sorry. So let's just visualize what is sharding, okay? Imagine that we have a collection that is 600 gig, okay? And what we want to do on one machine, so this is our one machine, let's say is 8 um, gig of memory, and our active working set or our, our active data that we're working on and all the work we're doing is approaching seven gig usage of memory. Now let's suppose that instead of storing all 600 gig on this eight gig machine of data, we distribute it across three machines that have eight gig of memory each. And 
three machines as well that let's say their uh, hard drives are one terabyte each and this one is one terabyte each. Now um, in this case because we're at 600 gig it really depends on the data growth but the, the reason why we're looking at sharding here in this situation only is because in this situation only not only is our data growth now 60% of our max capacity as far as we have 600 gig we have one terabyte available right what happens here is we have now 20% on this machine 20% and 20% right so it's really just 20% across the board for those of you who know math you know you can distribute those properties so it's 20% across the board we've dropped and then our memory that's actually being used we have 8 gig 8 gig and 8 gig versus just 8 gig up here so wherever the operations are going whether it's read operations the read operations may be happening on this machine we might have write operations on this machine maybe even read across but you'll notice it's going to be distributed across these three machines versus just smacking into this one machine so there are again you can you can think about it like well there's a cost benefit there right so what would be the cost of just bulking up this one machine versus what's going to be the cost of distributing across multiple machines. And again, the reason is because things like sharding and partitioning, there, there will be some administrative overhead that people sometimes fail to calculate going into it. And so as we cover these videos, the reason is developers often throw this out as a solution. They're not thinking like an administrator. An administrator is not just thinking about, okay, here's a possible solution, but okay, how do we manage and maintain that solution.